Yo, what's going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to another Locals feature match. Here we are on the fourth and final round of the week. Uh, there won't be a deck profile this week. Um, I'm actually not sure what I'm doing for content for the rest of the week. Uh, I'll probably try getting try to get a one deck one month episode out. Um, but uh, I'll probably be recording some sort of vlog over the weekend for Hartford. Um, and that'll be going up afterwards. If I have any other content I want to throw up in between now and then, I will. Um, but in the meantime, um, probably not going to be too much going on. Um, but either way, we have a branded mirror match here. Branded uh, Despia mirror match, both on the Allure variant. Um, no adventurer variant, like we saw, I think, in round one. So, nice little mirror match here. So, we're going to see our branded player on the left lead with opening into Alibur, uh, into branded fusion. Pretty, pretty standard opening here that we've all seen. Um countless times he does have poly ad lib edgem chain and a dramaturge in hand i think i saw an ad lib um, we're gonna see him fuse off the dramaturge and the edgem chain into a copy of masquerade we're gonna see him activate dramaturge and the chain here to go ahead and summon back the dramaturge chain effect to go ahead and add the patchwork patchwork effect to go add poly and chain um so setting up here for a really big board uh, this is one of those times you wish you had Nibiru in the main deck to punish a play like this. Because usually uh, Nibiru's not very good against this deck because it's typically just like um, Nibiru, or uh, not Nibiru, Nibiru pass. Um, it's typically just like uh, Mirror Jade pass uh, but with lots of pop. I mean, this actually might have been under five summons because I'm pretty sure he just... Alibur was one, Mirror Jade was two... Masquerade 3, Dramaturge 4. That actually might have been under 5 summons. Um, yeah. That's that's still wild. But either way, we're going to see our branded player on the right here. Um, yeah, I mean, this the, the branded deck definitely can play into Nibiru. It's just unlikely. Um, but it definitely can play into Nibiru. So we're going to see something wild happen here on the right. We're going to see Pot of Prosperity... Banish 3, getting him access to Alibur, and uh, ready ready for this? Ready for something wild to happen? And why we don't play Prosperity in the Allure variant? Because after you activate Prosperity, you cannot draw cards for the rest of the turn. But we have an Allure of Darkness coming down to draw two cards anyways. I mean, no one is Red Pot of Prosperity apparently in this game, so... It is what it is. No one caught it. It ha it happens. Um, but yeah, so he's gonna go ahead and draw two cards illegally and banish the Alibur. But yeah, I mean, we'll see if it matters here. Super Poly, you're gonna go ahead and pitch off the uh, Dramaturge here to go ahead and fuse away. He still is taking 600 here. Um, yeah, you can't activate anything in response to so Super Poly, right? But you know, the effect of Masquerade does not activate. It's just continuous. So he, before he even puts that card in the field, he has to pay the 600 beforehand. So yes, he still will take 600 there. Getting rid of the Alibur and getting rid of the Masquerade to go for the Dragos to Pelia. And uh, that's kind of a nice card to have here because it's going to like trade with the Dramaturge. Um, so yeah, Dramaturge will negate it on summon. There's no real point in trying to like negate with the Dragos to Pelia because it's not like you're, you're stopping... Um, like, like, you're not saving your negate, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, getting burned anyways. So we're going to see him normal summon Alibur now. Alibur's going to go ahead and grab the Branded Lost, which is a card that also not many people understand. Um, this card gets really confusing, like, for me especially and, like, many others. Um, when there's, like, a big chain link in, in, surrounding fusion summoning... Um, and branded loss is up. It's, it can get very confusing very easily. Um, so I learned your branded loss rulings uh, as soon as possible if you haven't already, because um, it can definitely get uh, out of hand very very quickly. So it looks like, yeah, this is this is an example here. So we're gonna see uh, on the resolution of loss, we're gonna see the branded player on the left activate branded uh, in red, and then they're gonna chain in response um, their own branded in red. Um, so he can do that because you know Brandon Red doesn't negate the effect. Um, well, I guess it would only matter if the other player had a Brandon Red, but either way, this is what's gonna happen now. So uh, since his fusion summon here 
is not chain link one um, his Brandon Lost isn't actually going to do anything, because Brandon Lost is a when effect. Um, so yeah, you have to keep that in mind. So, um, he's not going to get the effect of Brandon Lost here to protect anything, um, because it was not Chain Link 1. His Brandon Red was not Chain Link 1, and that's what matters the most here. Um, so he will still get Masquerade, and uh, I think the Brandon player on the left is telling him, you know, it is a when effect, so it can miss timing. Um, since his Brandon Red was Chain Link 2. Um, and the Brandon player on the left, all of his stuff is going to go through because it was Chain Link 1. Um, I mean, it doesn't really make too big of a difference since he doesn't have his own Brandon Red or his own Brandon Lost. Um, but yeah, that's an important thing that can happen here. So, like, all of the... Like, normally you wouldn't be able to, like, activate anything here. Like, you wouldn't be able to guard and come here and none of this, like, ad lib... Uh, dramaturge, uh, tragedy, like you wouldn't be able to do any of that uh, normally under a branded loss, um, but since his branded uh, loss, um, branded in red, oh my god, see how confusing it gets, wasn't chain link one, it was chain link two, um, you know, branded loss isn't stopping any of this stuff from happening, uh, where in some of the cases it would, um, yeah, so we're gonna see his dramaturge come out, and all of his other effects are gonna resolve here, um, everything on a new chain, right? Um, so we'll get to like summon back dramaturge, we'll get to summon back mirror chain off the ad lib, we'll get to search off the tragedy, we'll get to pop one and draw two off the chimera. Um, so getting rid of his opponent's branded loss here, and then we're gonna see if our branded player in the right can go ahead and continue to push through the board here. Um, he's gonna have a copy of branded fusion here, which is definitely gonna help. Um, card's insane, like just activating that card puts you so far ahead. Um, but we'll see how far ahead it can get him here. Um, he does have to worry about a Mirror Jade still. Um, the Chimera, I believe, is also protected from targeting as well here. Um, and then also Dramaturge is just kind of a pain also. Um, so we're going to see him fuse off with the Fallen of Albaz. And I think that other card he sent was a copy of Tragedy here. But uh, don't know if it's necessarily going to be enough. Also, really quickly, going back to that branded in red, uh, um, you know, interaction we saw earlier, had the play like the turn player right now had his branded in red as chain link one, and the other opponent decided to go chain link two, um, I don't believe any of his effects would have been able to activate um, because branded and lost would see that his fusion summon was chain link one it was the last thing to happen so like he would summon the chimera and then his brandon red would resolve summoning something um and then on that new chain um you know the dramaturge the uh the ad lib the the tragedy the chimera none of that would be able to resolve um because it's happening in that summoning window um so yeah it's just a matter of it like how it how the chain link is built um, you always want your fu effect that fusion summons to be chain link one. Um, if it's any like higher than that, in most cases, like it's just Brandon Red or a uh, Brandon Loss is not going to protect. I know it's super confusing. Um, I probably didn't do the best job of explaining it. Somebody in the comments can probably do a better job than I. Um, it's hard to really do it like in real time in a commentary because I can't like pause the the match um, and keep commentating. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and see. Uh, the Dramaturge is going to stop the, uh, the Albion, and then we're going to see Mirror Jade go ahead and banish the Masquerade, and then I think he is going to crash Dramaturge is here. All he has left in hand is Polly as well, which is kind of okay, but... You know, he doesn't have a Guardian Chimera push right now because you have to have monsters in hand to go for the Guardian Chimera. Because it does say that you have to use cards from both hand and field. So, Guardian Chimera is kind of offline right now. Um, yeah, it's just not looking super good here right now. Um, like, the Guardian Chimera being on field at 33, especially since it can't be targeted, is kind of huge. Um, yeah, so I think we're just going to go ahead and see him. Just go ahead and crash. Dramaturge is here. And I believe the Masquerade, or not the Masquerade, the Mirror Jade has already been used. And then he's going to crash his own Albion. 
or at least attempt to crash it but he does have that fairy tale snow engrave um so he's gonna go ahead and banish seven here because you want to you want to stop the albion from crashing because that would allow him to in the end phase get to a brandon red of his own which would give him some form of interruption during his opponent's next turn so if you can prevent that from happening um you know you might as well and this has been a very long turn um so the that that drago stapelli has already used its negate this turn or i think it's been forced by a dramaturg so um yeah that's not going to do too much here either can't really stop the yeah fairy tale snow so he's going to unbook the albion that's going to prevent again from getting into his grave for that end phase surge and uh yeah now we're going to see him go to end phase here and we're going to see him activate the effect of albion that's going to go um into the deck here and allow him to either set or add a brandis bar trap probably just going to grab brandon fusion here i mean i guess grabbing brandon and red also works he's also going to use masquerade's graveyard effect to go ahead and revive itself and uh yeah i see this being game here he's going to pick up a forbidden droplet for turn um as if he didn't already have an easy enough time with the cards available to get to the board now it's just basically free at this point um it's just a matter of doing it in the most optimal way possible no no threats in graveyard right now um but you do want to make sure it is game because right he is going to have albion engraved to search end phase if you know things don't go 100 in the way of his favor here like 100 otk but like there's no interruptions here i mean i guess maybe you have the drago sapelia to worry about um which really isn't a big threat and he has his opponent has a poly in hand which obviously or he might actually know about the poly in hand um especially if a patchwork was resolved but we're just gonna see him go ahead and fusion summon here four three go for a second chimera and uh yeah that's just gonna go ahead and seal the deal there and we're gonna go ahead and go into a game two really quickly i'd like to mention a quick shout out to imperium duelist lovely sponsor of this channel if you guys want to get any of their amazing products like their brand new wind themed attribute deck box um or play mats uh binders sleeves and more check them out at the link below and don't forget to use the discount code winner kills 10 off to save 10 percent off your entire order and support the channel in the process and if you guys are shopping on tcg player or the coldest water don't forget you can use my affiliate links to them found in the description of all my videos if you guys shop and check out using those links a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel so getting into the game here we will see our Brandon Despia player on the right here. Lead with Polly. Look like sending double tragedy. Um, could be seeing things, but look like double tragedy to go for Masquerade. And then we're going to see him um, activate tragedy to go ahead and grab Alber. Alber effect to search Brandon Loss and then activate the Branded Fusion here. And we're just going to go ahead and see him. You obviously want to activate the Branded Loss here. Um, just so you can get that extra search um once that fusion monster hits the board i do see a d barrier in the hand here for the branded player on the left which is a little interesting to see d barrier in going um going second but i i mean i kind of understand why we're gonna see him dump ecclesia and albaz really nice to see ecclesia being played in here um there is some you know cool synergy because if she's in the grave at the end phase and you have a fusion monster in your grave, you can just add her back to your hand. Um, so that gives you the opportunity to have follow-up and it gets you to Albaz, which can basically trade with a, you know, a negate the opponent has or allows you to basically super poly into something and get your engine going. So now we're going to see the Albion activate here. Banishing itself an Albaz to go for Mirror Jade. And I believe he searched the Mercurier, the Mercurier. So has that negate in hand as well. And then has Brandon in red. Won't get the effect of Albion in the end phase, obviously, since it's not engraved. So, yeah, he did use double tragedy, I believe, for that masquerade. So, one set. I mean, yeah, I kind of have to assume that it's Brandon in red. Um, and then here's the uh, the 600 life point loss extravaganza. We'll see him draw another allure in DD Crow off of the, the first allure. We're going to see him slap down Brandon Lost. He does have Brandon Fusion, which is great. He does have DD Crow, which is great. Um, although, it will trade with the Mercurier. If that is the card he added to hand, which I mean, I'm pretty sure you would just add Mercurier there. Because um, that like all your bases are covered. Like You can't Bell the Brandon in red because you have Brandon lost. You can't DD Crow it because you have the Mercurier. Um, 
The only thing they need is something like Night Beam, I guess. Um, or Anti-Magic Arrow or Blizzard um, to shut it down. Because um, at that point, you know, Mercurio can only stop monsters. So after a little bit of deliberation, we're going to see him go ahead and activate the Branded Fusion here, which I think is probably just correct to just leave with that. Because I think he does have a Branded and Red of his own. So it's going to be able a lot, a lot of pushing through the board here taking 600 along the way so 600 for the allure 600 for the branded loss 600 for the branded fusion and then we're going to see him activate chain link one lubelion chain link two uh tragedy chain link three mercur or uh, chain link three brandon lost um so we're going to go ahead and see him take uh 1800 damage there i believe and so we're going to go ahead and see him add Mercurier. And I don't believe he's discarded yet. Um, definitely should have discarded by now uh, for the Lubellion because that is cost. So you can't just like add, add, then discard and summon. Because like in order to even activate Lubellion, you have to pay the cost first, even if it is Chain Link 1. Um... Because it looked like he wanted to... Unless I'm missing something. Um, yeah, so he's discarding the alert. Okay, so like I guess that's fine because he didn't discard one of the cards that um, he added in that chain link there. So I guess that all works out fine. Um, but you do have to discard first. You can't just discard after you've done all that stuff. Um, you know, chain link 1, rebellion, discard. Chain link 2, uh, tragedy. Chain link 3, loss, right? So we're going to see him go into Lubellion, into Mirror Jade, and Mirror Jade Effect. He's going to go ahead and summon, send the Albion here. And, yeah, send some... Um, Branded Fusion was, like, basically Chain Link 1 here. Um, yeah, he can't respond to any of this since uh, Mirror Jade, like, there's nothing else happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. I believe so, because, yeah, it was 3, 2, 1, and then all of that resolves. Rebellion was still Chain Link 1, and now, since he's using Mirror Jade on Summon um, as Chain Link 1, his opponent cannot respond. I believe that is correct. Um, so he can't do anything to stop that. So, like, basically, proper use of Branded Loss here, I believe. This card is, it's, it, when you, like... Like, reading it, it's like, okay, it's easy to understand, but, like, once you start building chain links around the card and, like, does it miss timing versus not, does it, like, does it not miss timing, like, things like that, it can get a little confusing. Um, but it was, like, one Lubalion, two Tragedy, three Lost. Um, so Lubalion was chain link one. It was the last thing to happen in the chain. Um, so it will be protected there. Everything is protected. Um, since it was in the summoning window, too, and then, you know, the on summon of the uh, the mirror jade, uh, that that's just chain link one, and so is the effect to use a you know send a card from the extra deck to banish, so that can't be responded to. Um, so then we're gonna see him go ahead and I believe attack over the masquerade, because um, I think he banished mirror jade with the mirror jade, and end phase we're gonna see him resolve the Albion here. And he's no longer taking life points for this, obviously, because the Mirror Jade is... Yeah, so he's, he went ahead and ran over the um, the Masquerade with the Mirror Jade. This has got to be one of the most confusing <laughs> Mirror Matches I've commentated over in a while. Um, I'm trying my best, though. I'm trying my best. So, we'll see what he wants to set. I believe he already has Brandon and Red in play. So, I mean, that's basically going to give that away by the fact that he's adding... Um, the Brandon Fusion, not setting something like, okay, you already have Brandon Red. End phase, we're going to see Ecclesia add itself back. Um, we'll see if he wants to do anything else in end phase here. Maybe use a Brandon Red of his own. Um, it looks like he will opt not to. And we'll see the turn change over here to the player on the right. And we'll see how he wants to go about cracking the board. The D Crow never ended up needing to be used there. Kind of playing around uh, like a possible Mercurier 
very well just by, you know, using, you know, having Brandon lost up, using the Mirror Jade on summon and kind of not giving the opportunity to use it. Um, but we're going to see him set another card here. Which is interesting. So we're going to see him activate Branded Fusion. And then we're going to see him chain D Barrier. Which can be done, obviously, since yeah, you know, D Barrier doesn't negate the activations of things that Fusion Summon. It just makes it so you can't Fusion Summon. It's not negating the activation of Branded uh, Fusion, so. And yeah, if this Brandon like this Brandon Red is gonna be um, Chain Link two, um, or Chain Link three here, and there's DD Crow. So like, had he not even had the DD Crow, um, Brandon Lost would not have protected in the situation because why? Brandon Fusion or uh, Brandon Lost was not Chain Link one. Uh, Brandon and Red was not Chain Link one. It was Chain Link three in this case. It was not the last thing to happen. The last thing to happen would uh, be Brandon Fusion resolving without effect, causing the Brandon uh, Lost to miss timing. Um, but yeah, DD Crow plus D Barrier, kind of an FTK here, and I really don't know if he's going to be able to recover at this point. Um, now, he can use Masquerade's Effect in Grave. Like, he can still activate it because, you know, D Barrier only stops um, whatever type of monster you call from activating its effect on field. Hence why, like, if you tribute off Ben 10 and your opponent calls Ritual with D Barrier, you can still use Ben 10 Effect in Grave because it only stops things on field. You just can't summon them. Um, so, like, he can't summon the Masquerade back. Um, unless he chained the Masquerade. I don't have Masquerade's text pulled up currently. Um, but I just want to double check. I assume it's a quick effect. Um, While well, you control this fusion summon card, uh, quick effect. Yeah, so he could have chained it to summon it back there, but... Don't necessarily know if it was worth it. Looks like he just went ahead and normal summoned the Ecclesia that he got added back here. And that's kind of clutch. Um, because now it can act as kind of like a pseudo interruption here. Um, to go ahead and get out the... Um, the Albaz out of deck. And Al he does have Mercurier in hand, or Brandon Player on the left here. Um, but it looks like on summon... He is going to activate Mirror Jade to try and stop it. And he will chain the Droplet to stop that. Because if he gets the uh, Albaz off the field, it won't resolve. And it looks like that is just going to be the game. Him chaining that Brandon Red. Because it's going to make it so the Mirror Jade is going to go through stopping his fusion play that turn. And he's just probably going to get OTK'd. So we're going to see the Brandon player on the left winning a 2-0 there. And uh, if you guys want to see more of my content, check out one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And last but not least, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members, who are Tweeter0226, Pony Stark, Chattelax84, Justin Lamb, and HDH Cyber. Thank you guys so much for your extremely kind and generous support of this channel.